The story of David and Goliath has inspired countless artists to illustrate the later discovery that animal sinew could be used to extend the range and power of the punishing blow. The sling was to be a big step toward firepower. Early devices such as catapult and ballista improved on the idea, hurling rocks greater distances against fortified strongholds. It was during the savage Thirty Years' War that the sword and spear began their exit. New weapons were taking stage. First had come the crossbow, which in turn was outmoded when Europe's map and history were reshaped by the formidable English longbow. But now, early experiments with gunpowder were ushering in the beginnings of modern artillery. Once tamed, it would be applied to small arms. This, in turn, inspired new inventiveness. Those early pieces required special ammunition. Soon, both small arms and cannon would hurl metal projectiles. By the time our own country emerged, artillery had come of age, capable of achieving range, accuracy, and destructive power, the clenched fist had come a long way. Cannons used lead balls loaded at the muzzle and had to be swabbed after firing. Leftover powder grains might ignite and blow up gun and crew. Napoleon Bonaparte would soon employ cannon against personnel as well as against fortified positions. Firepower would make him dictator of Europe. Our own civil war brought full realization of artillery's versatile uses. Superior firepower helped write the end of that tragic chapter. Cannon and small arms both were still loaded at the muzzle, but early efforts toward rapid and continuous fire had made their appearance, and so too experimental breech loaders. War with Spain brought national awareness of the Army's efforts to give its fighting men the ultimate in firepower. The muzzle loader had disappeared to join catapult and longbow. Modern breech-loading arms were now extending our own clenched fist. <laughs> 